This is T. Boone Pickens, and this is my first podcast. I feel like I've been on every show out there, but I thought it was about time we talked regularly about energy, not just when it's in the news. I am pleased to introduce my first guest, Ambassador Gary Dorr, now Ambassador to the United States from Canada. Yes. You know, the Americans always ask me, people in Washington ask me, what do you do with snow in Canada? And I explain to them, we shovel it, we lift it, we put it in a river, and we put it through turbines, and we sell it back to the United States at seven cents a kilowatt hour. So everything <laughs> in Canada, we see an opportunity. That's right. Let's talk about the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, that, uh, as you know, I did an op-ed piece on that last week and sent it to Canada. Yeah, I got a lot of coverage in Canada. Did, did the letter, it? yes. Well, it should have, because yes. here is a frustrated American with Canadian experience, <clears throat> and I just, I don't get it. Uh, not you, you, the Canadians. Canadians are always patient up to a point. And always, this is the way I, I've, I've seen uh, working in Canada, is they're patient up to a point, but when they make up their mind, uh, they're going to they're going to do something. Yeah, we, well, we're long distance runners. So the whole you development are. of the oil sands or hydropower or gas in Canada, it's all been people uh, that have taken a long term view and have made their decisions not on the basis of today's news, but tomorrow's opportunity. So we, we still see the Keystone Pipeline as part of the infrastructure that has to be built. Uh, between our two countries. We, we think we've won the lottery uh, in North America with energy. We sometimes have difficulty cashing the ticket. Uh, we think that uh, when you look at the State Department report on Keystone last year, just about 12 months ago, it said if the pipeline wasn't built, there'd be more oil on rail. They said that if it's more on rail, it has three consequences. One, it costs more, and that hurts Canada. Not as safe. Yeah. Two, it's not nearly as safe as a pipeline if it goes on rail. And thirdly, it has higher greenhouse gases. So in essence, if the State Department or the EPA or the President says no to it, they're saying yes to higher greenhouse gases on rail than pipelines. So this okay, is why it's quite absurd. To let us. me comment on that. Yeah. But what the President wants is no fossil fuels. Well, he's got a lot of fossil fuels. and. Part of what he's got is development in his own country of oil and gas. Uh, he has, in the last period of time, the United States is relying less on OPEC through Canadian oil and American oil than ever before. And that's a good thing. In fact, he campaigned on that in 2007. He said, in 10 years, we will not import any oil from the Mideast. Yes. And he's never, he's never said it again, or I, if he has, I missed it. Well, we haven't heard him say it lately. No. Uh, we, no. But we are, we think, uh, and when you look at the Keystone Pipeline, again, the State Department scientifically says this will displace the United States' reliability on OPEC oil and uh, displace Venezuelan oil. Uh, and of course, when you look last year, there was 738,000 barrels a day. Uh, Keystone can deal with that from Canada. Who, who do you want? Venezuela? that are kicking out your diplomats or Canada that are open for business? Don't uh, give me uh, too much room to criticize this administration. I, uh, I'll take up all our time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a diplomat. So <laughs> the administration, this is the interesting thing. On war with ISIL, Canada and the United States are allies. We've been allies ever since the War of 1812. Uh, on domestic terrorist threats. We just signed another agreement of how we can operate our borders more efficiently, more effectively, uh, sharing risk. Uh, when it comes to a terrorist plot, we, we, we work together, FBI and RCMP. I hope so, you would so, take that and move it to our southern border. Well, we can only be responsible for... <laughs> they, uh, well, we're, we have a border with the United States in two places, south of Canada and north of Canada into Alaska. and. Uh, so we, uh, we have pretty good border relations, but we're trying well, to improve that. Well, sure. I mean, that, and we should extend that. Keystone Pipeline w should have been decided in the first year. And well, we would have liked it to happen. It, it, it just... Well, we could so have been... The oil is coming down. 
So w when people say, oh, if we don't develop the pipeline, the oil will stay in the ground. Well, how many years do they have to be proven to be wrong uh, for us to make the right decision on the proper infrastructure? Oil is remains flowing from Canada to the United States and from the Bakken uh, to Canada and to the United States, the Bakken oil of course, you get that back over in eastern Canada, don't we you? We do, and we get some going to eastern United States. The pipeline, contrary to what the administration says, uh, is not just for Canadian oil. I heard them say, oh, it's only going to benefit Canada. Who knew that North Dakota and Montana were now in Canada? But because Bakken oil is part of that pipeline proposal. Yes, I know that. And it's, a, it's such, a, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity for both countries. That's right. I mean, where, where, I mean, you just got through saying, you had good relationships with the United States, you're struggling with the Keystone Pipeline. Yeah, it, it's and definitely, so, uh, it's a big, big pain that we can't get the right infrastructure approved based on science. It's become a symbol. We would rather have substance determine, substance and science rather than not symbols. Well, let me tell you. And, and symbols in Hollywood where it's going, every governor, de Democrat or Republican, supports it. The building trade unions support yeah, it. Not every Democrat does because it, we where, where the pipeline's going. Oh, okay. So yeah. the governor... Uh, we should have overridden the veto the other day. But let me four make... Four votes short. Why? We got nine Democrats and 54 Republicans. We're 63. Oh, but I know. we would like it just to go ahead on the basis of proper but, science. But I was with the group last night uh, and they said, well, we'll just, you can imagine who the group is, but they said, well, we'll just vote it in again and send her back up the letter. And well, it, you know, we would like it to be approved the old-fashioned way. Science, common sense, the oil's coming down. Should it come down on pipelines or should it come down on rail? Now, I represent railways as well, and there is a role uh, for small refineries to have railways. But when you have a huge volume of oil uh, going to the Gulf Coast, uh, all of it is going to Gulf Coast refineries, not going to offshore right away. And as Daniel Jurgen said, 70% of the oil after it's refined by U.S. workers is stays in the United States. So we've got this other myth we're dealing with that it's just an export pipeline. That's just not true. No, I know it's not. I, and I know you know that, but I just want to make that point. I will, and the point's well made, yeah. that it isn't an export pipeline. That's right. I've, I've defended that. You and have, and we appreciate that. I know. I keep, I, I keep on trucking on that. I, I, I said, that. you think that pipeline's going to come across the United States, and the United States is not going to have opportunity to use Canadian oil. Of course they are. Well, it's absurd, actually, to take it all the way down from Canada to the Gulf Coast all the way through the Panama Canal, all the way back past, you know, the west coast of Canada to get it to Asia. I mean, we've got two proposed pipelines to the west coast of Canada, and, you know, they're controversial, but I do believe within three years one of them will be approved at least. And then we've got two other pipelines proposed to the, go to the east coast of Canada. So There's people, not going to be enough for the Keystone if we don't hurry yeah, up. Yeah, if you don't hurry up. And all these, some of these senators are voting against Keystone on the east coast, they might actually have barges coming by their their uh, their their area uh, well, because they, they're not approving the pipeline. Let's go back to the yeah. root problem that we're both dealing with. There are people that believe that you can cut out fossil fuels. They sincerely, some of them, believe that if the pipeline is not built, the oil will stay in the ground. Now, you would think after five years, when there's about 200,000 barrels per day increase to the United States from Canada uh, per year that somebody would say this million barrels a day proves we're wrong and maybe we should look at safer infrastructure but well, we don't get that kind of logic. Okay right in my country yes dealing with these uh, environmentalists <clears throat> that they truly will engage it's not a five-minute debate because they don't know enough to go five minutes in a debate. About three minutes will take care of it. You are going to use fossil fuels uh, for another hundred years. Well, we believe that, you know, okay. it, 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 even if, you know, you get into these long uh, theories, but the reality, today's reality is it's coming down a tenfold increase 
oil on rail. So how does an environmentalist, uh, I think it's almost borders on environmental malpractice to take oil that could be on a safe pipeline and put it on to rail with higher emissions uh, with the okay, uh, well, transportation I was, on rail. I was at Aspen last year yes. and I was given an environmental award. Uh, they, when I was there five years before and I spoke, they booed me. Yeah. Okay, now they're giving me an award. Well, <laughs> it's, I, I don't quite get it. But I did ask one of their biggest supporters, uh, Tom Steyer. Yes. Uh, I asked Tom, I said, Tom, you're, the world is producing 93 million barrels of oil a day. And 70% of that goes to transportation fuel. And you want to cut out fossil fuels. Let's just say that Tom won and Boone lost. And we've cut out fossil fuels. You have to have an alternative. You can't just say cut out fossil fuels and that's the way it works. You've got to have an alternative to tell people. Seventy percent of transportation uh, is, well, seventy percent of the oil goes to transportation. So if you cut out fossil fuels, you're going to shut down everything. Yeah, not many people I saw go to I, that. I bet you not many people went to that panel, so, panel in Aspen in a kayak. Uh, they got there probably w in the traditional way either. <laughs> they, did, they, did, they didn't cycle or take a, a kayak. I, I often hear people saying, oh, I weaned myself completely off of fossil fuels. If that was in Copenhagen, and it begs the question, how long is that kayak ride uh, from Hollywood well, they to got Copenhagen? A, they got a bicycle too. Yeah, but they, 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 they don't, <laughs> okay. that's a long bicycle ride over I, the ocean. I understand, but now yeah. I, he came up with the alternative. You know what it was? What? He said, you would turn it over to the government and through their vast research they would tell us what fuel to use. Well, uh, that, uh, anybody, no government would be re-elected if they took away everybody's car. I know he's going to run for election someday, but I would not recommend that that would be his first, you know, reducing our, you know, our footprint. I, I, but, I get that, but you know. To, but to, Gary, yeah. that he uh, who would ever turn over the the selection of the fuel to use for our transportation to the government? Well, the public wouldn't allow it in either well, country. Well, I w well, I'm 86. Yeah. I w I wouldn't have a chance living long enough to get the uh, <laughs> the fuel from the yeah. government. Yeah. I mean, no. No, no. Uh, Canada it, and the United States. You, you look at it. One of the ways to deal with emissions is to go to higher fuel standards. So Canada and the United States sat down and worked out higher energy efficiency cars. And that is the way to go, make the vehicles more energy efficient. So we have participated. Well, you're, you're talking cafe standards. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we were part of that. So you took the California standards and the Quebec standards and mm -hmm. the BC standards and the and, and Michigan. That's a, and we, and, and but that you is, put together a tough crowd there. Yeah, I mean those people have standards. That's right. And they we went with one standard internationally on the border. We're, and, and not only have we reduced emissions, we're selling more cars because they're more fuel efficient. Yeah. So uh, that you know we Canada is willing to work with the United States uh, daily on how to be more energy efficient, how to look at uh, a competitive market and make it uh, more sustainable. We, we're willing to sit down and talk about heavy oil in Alberta and and heavy oil in California, thermal oil in California, and Venezuelan oil. We're willing to sit down and try to do what we did with but light vehicles. We're not, we're not standing in cement. We want to keep moving. Well, we are in agreement. Yes. So what, what that causes is for you and I to sit here. I'm a little more frustrated than you are because, like you said, you're a diplomat. No, uh, I'm, we're long-distance runners. So if you look at the Keystone Pipeline, Three liabilities identified, cost, emissions, and safety. Two out of those three liabilities for delaying or denying the pipeline are borne by Americans. Uh, you know, one of them, well, the, that's the cost why, is... That's why I'm frustrated. Yeah, well, 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 we're frustrated because it obviously affects us on the cost side. So one of the three liabilities is cost. That certainly affects producers in Canada. But the other two, safety and emissions... That's in the United States. This is actually 
not in the not only in our best interest, it's in the U.S.'s best interest to go ahead. When you get in a debate with these people, it can't last very long because they start off and say, well, you, you damage the aquifer when you're drilling uh, wells. No, and then I go through this. They don't know what I'm talking about. No, it, you know, and it, the bottom line is we've got the amended route. Everybody agrees to it. Uh, a lot of hard hats want jobs. We think the president should choose hard hats over Hollywood, but uh, I, we're, we're worried all right, about Hollywood. You, all right, how do you think, what's the outcome? When do we, uh, we the United States, uh, agree to or accept a nice, I, it's not a gift because Canada has advantage by doing it too. They get, they get to sell oil, they get to deal with their, their friendliest neighbor that they'll ever have and the United States and it's a very good deal for both countries. Yeah, we think it's good for both countries. It is. Yeah, we and, do. okay, when do you think that decision will be made? Well, it's not trending based on what I hear from the administration in a positive way, uh, so I want to be honest about that. Okay, but what's the difference? Uh, the parties, there shouldn't, this is not a party issue. Well, there's... This is an American and Canadian issue. And we would we would prefer that to be the way it's resolved. Yes. But what do you call partisan votes in the United States? Well, call, are you talking about Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas? Well, we've got approval all the way through, uh, and including Democratic, wh where the pipeline crosses the border, the Democratic governor, and the Democratic senator and a Republican senator, both all three of them support it. So they're right right away where it crosses the border, the, the two inches that the president has jurisdiction, the international border. Is uh, is really we've got all party approval right there. <laughs> but right at that at, point, and you, seventy million dollars in property tax taxes from the pipeline to the people of Montana uh, for that route to go through there. Uh, okay, you and I have agreed that yes, we have. It's a simple decision. It yep. should be done. Okay, but you could lay that pipeline down to the two inch. Yes, we could. And stop it there, fill up the trucks. Rail it, yeah, truck it across. Truck it across and another pipeline could be built. Yes, it could. And you could put it in and move it. Yeah, we and could. And that pipeline will be easy to get. That one will. Well, in Canada it's already approved and there's a permit in uh, Montana for sure and there, there's an argument about eminent domain in, in Nebraska, but uh, we've had a permit before in South Dakota. So, and there already is Pipe, pipe available in, in Kansas. So, yeah, we think that that could happen, but that is, this shows you how ridiculous That's this right. debate is. I That's, mean, this is. You, this got, is, you got the right description. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, to, to pipe it to the border, uh, you know, get on a white horse and carry it across in buckets across the two inches and then put in another pipeline, uh, how but is it, that good for the environment? Well, of course, it, yeah. it's not good for anything. No, uh, it's not. But stupidity is would be the uh, that's why we would go down in history it would and, if, and canada doesn't like to be stupid we no. might be long distance runners and uh, we're resilient uh you know we play hockey we play a seven game series it's not a one game knockout so we 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 will uh we will continue to know that this is the best infrastructure for this oil and eventually it will get done okay now okay we're bringing this down to a conclusion and but when do you think that pipeline <coughs> is going to be built? Well, if it's on science, it'll be built tomorrow. If it's on politics and noise, I, don't, I can't predict. You, you don't think that uh, on politics that a Republican president uh, in 16 would not quickly approve that? We want to get it approved with the present administration today. Uh, we think that uh, I know, but I'm asking yeah. you when you think it's going to happen. Well, you know, you cannot surrender two years to get it approved by speculating that it might get approved in 16. So you're not going to commit to no. You know, you can get it done in 16. Yeah, you can't. But you want to beat that. We don't surrender. We we we're going to keep at it every week, every day, every month okay. until it gets approved. Well, I and we're not going to wait. We're not. You say we're patient. But we're, we're going to continue to argue that's in the public interest of the United States 
I have. You're going to work hard. Yeah, we're not going to give away two years. But you can look at, at uh, 16 Republican president as the finish line if you had to. You're, you're going to work to the finish line, but... No, we're working... I understand. We're, all the way. Every day that's delayed or denied is another day that more Canadian oil gets on rail, rumbles through American communities, and uh, we believe there's a better way to do it. And I am 100% for Canada and the United States. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now, I want to make my prediction. Yes. <laughs> you, you're not sure you want it. No, I, uh, you know, as Jack Why Nicholson not? said, I can handle the truth from you, but I don't have to accept it in terms of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> that I, I give you 50-50, you get it before this administration changes to something realistic in administrations. But I'm very critical of this crowd, as you know. Uh, you have to deal with them. Yeah, as I say, and on, you on have dealing said. with terrorists, we, we get along well. Okay. Uh, on this infrastructure proposal, I don't think they're making the right decision. I just think they're delaying it and denying it. I think they're, as I say, they're, get, they're getting higher greenhouse gases by denying it. How could that be global warming? I, okay. All right. I think you're 50-50. Okay. Yeah, I think what's going to happen is there, uh, Congress is going to introduce it again, vote it through, Senate votes for it, and we pick up two more senators. Uh, uh, the second, <laughs> and if it doesn't work, they're, they're, they want it, they are going to put it through again, and 50-50 you'll get it before this administration goes out, okay? And 100% after it goes out. So. Well, bottom we're, line is. We're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, I, well, the, the, the bottom line is we got to, if it's in the public interest of Canada and the United States, you know, when you get a, when I was in politics, if I got a report, say I had unions fighting environmentalists, and I got a report that said this is the <laughs> safest option. You're going to get serious. I, I'm going to absolutely take the safest option. Sure you are. Because you know, to the media, if something happens, we don't want anything to happen. We had a horrible incident in Canada. But if something happens, You're all, the media, the, one down all the media that were doing the, you know, you know, the kind of, having all these climate change types marching in, you know, in front page of the New York Times, the media is going to look at that report and say there was a, that, that wasn't a red flag when they said 28 people would die if the pipeline's not built. That is a <coughs> huge neon sign, and the administration didn't pay attention to it. I, I would not want to be Secretary Kerry or the White House or the President ignoring the best safety recommendations. Uh, it is not a good place uh, as an elected, a well, former remember. elected leader. I would, I always went with the safest option, always. Okay, I got that. But that now you said, uh, how can Kerry, uh, how can Obama, you know, not take the safest option? Also, first thing is Obama's not running for office again. So but, he's he uh, he is, but put the spotlight over on. Uh, and, uh, Secretary Kerry. Well, I think Secretary Kerry, if Hillary Clinton doesn't run, that Secretary Kerry is going to be right in that race. That that may I will never predict who will be in the race and who won't be in the United States because I've been surprised before. <laughs> but I uh, I believe so. If you say no to the pipeline, there's no question there'll be a huge hallelujah choir from the environmentalists saying how great this is for one week. Uh, and But today's hallelujah chorus is not tomorrow's legacy. And legacy, if you make the unsafe decision uh, and have higher GHGs, history will treat you differently. That's exactly right. Legacies are not pundits. Legacies are not today's newscast. Legacies no. are not today's no, that's hallelujah what you chorus. Today, legacies are longer term. That's right. And if you make an unsafe decision, I, w I wouldn't make an unsafe decision. Well, it was, uh, I thought it was a good exchange. Uh, we agree on too many things. We do, and because, Calgary still loves you. And it's the reason we agree on too many things. We do know between us what the right decision should be. So thank you, yeah, let's Ambassador see, let's, Gary Dore. Let's go for safety. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you.